Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. We are going to start with academic IELTS reading, and uh, I want you all to be with me uh, as uh, reading is quite complicated in IELTS. Academic reading or gender training reading, both readings are quite complicated. Uh, in gender training reading, uh, when we come to section three or part three. The passage is exactly like academic reading. So that is why for gender training candidates, it's a good idea to solve academic reading tests. Uh, so we're going to solve a test now. What you need to do, you need to learn the strategies, how to read the questions, what to see in the question, and after reading the question, where to go to find the answer. Uh, before we proceed, remember there are three key reading skills. Number one, scanning. Now, what is scanning? You see a word in the question and you're looking for that word in the passage. That is what we call scanning. So, a good example of scanning is like you go to any supermarket or department store and you are looking for any product and you look from shelf to shelf and you are just scanning for something specific. For example, you are in the section of biscuits and they have all type of biscuits and you are looking for one specific type and you know the name so you'll be scanning okay 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 looking here and there and suddenly you find that brand of biscuits you pick it up from there in the same way when you read the question do not read the question without a clue each question in IELTS has a clue so if you read the question without a clue, then you come to the passage, you will not understand anything. And then you complain IELTS reading is difficult in one hour. I've got time management issues and all that. So time management is a problem when you waste your time here and there. When you don't waste your time, one hour is enough. I mean, if you read the question, you scan and you reach the passage where there is the answer, you can smoothly do it. Time is actually wasted when you move around here and there and you are stuck. You don't know where to go, what to do and all that. Now, uh, I would like to request you all to be with me because we are not going to have any competition that who will give me the answer first and the lucky winner will go to Canada. Huh? There is no lucky winner. Okay, so don't go beyond me. It's not that I'm reading question number one and you are on question number three. Don't do that because we need to go together. Uh, I'll teach you all the things and I'll just tell you how to read the question, how to find that clue word, and then how to scan the passage. So I was telling you about key reading skills. Number one is scanning. And when you scan, you don't read. Keep in mind, whenever you scan, you don't read. Only you move your eyes move through the lines and you're looking for a specific word. Your eyes are looking for one specific phrase or some specific words or maybe some synonyms. Uh, Sometimes even you don't have exact word in mind. You know this is the word and there must be some synonym of that word and I've got to find that synonym. So you need to scan for that, the first thing. Uh, I will also tell you where questions and passage are in order so that once you find the answer of one question, Read ahead, you will find next answer. Read ahead, you will find the next answer. And you should know that as well. I mean, you should know if the question type is sentence completion. Questions and passage, they are in the same order. If the question type is true, false, not given. Yes, no, not given. Any completion type of questions, any flow chart, questions and passage, they are in the same order. So if you know, for example, you find the answer of question number four, you know now I have to read ahead. So then it is going to be easier for you. So if you do IELTS reading systematically, systematically there is, there is a system, there is a method of doing it all. If you do it like that, then you can manage your time in one hour. And otherwise, if it is a mishmash, okay, there is the answer. I got to do it here, there, everywhere. I can't find the answer, what to do and all that. Most of the time, students do not understand the question. Just they read the question and they come back to passage. After a few seconds, they forget the question. Then again, they go back to the questions, read the question again and all that. So this takes time and then they become frustrated. And once in IELTS reading, you become stressed or frustrated, then it is quite difficult to get out of that situation. You'll be thinking, my money, expectations, 
and all that, right? So uh, once one of my students, she had a bad time in listening part one. What happened? Listening part one, they played some old test and there were some multiple choice questions. And she started thinking, IELTS pattern has changed. And then she was expecting, yeah, IELTS pattern is changed. They never give uh, multiple choice in part. They do give multiple choice in part one, right? They're old. If you just open Cambridge IELTS book number four, five, six, seven, there you can fi find multiple choice. In, and multiple choice is very simple in part one. Like options are A930, B1030, C1130. Options are black, red, orange. Very simple options. So if you have anything bad, that is why I advise you all, don't take any panga with anyone on your IELTS test day. Say hello to everyone. Take everyone's blessings and come for your test. Right? Don't mess around with anybody because a little bad mood is going to, going to be aggravated during the exam. And then it's all about your feelings. The way you are in the test, for example, you do listening test one, you find good answers, now you're more confident. You'll do better in part two, better in part three. Same is the case with reading. All is well that starts well. So you should focus your section one. Okay, so uh, I was telling you about skimming. Skimming is something that you read quickly, right? And just you, you try to get the gist of that. And, and uh, in order to skim, you have to read. You don't need to read everything. You can read first line. And if you get the idea that this passage or this paragraph, because you know the first sentence of each paragraph usually gives you the idea what is going to be in this passage. In a minute, I'm going to show you how. So once you get that idea, uh, you're going to be clear that, okay, in this paragraph, they are giving the background. In this paragraph, they are talking about this and all that. I'm going to explain that. So after skimming, uh, by the way, we, we need skimming techniques for uh, questions like list of headings. There you need skimming technique. And sometimes when you are scanning, you don't make any sense. So you switch to skimming. Then again, you come to scanning. Then again, you stop and start skimming. It's just like you are walking and running. First running, you see something, you start walking. Then again, you start running. Running is scanning and walking is skimming. Okay, we'll do it all here. Okay, now, first of all, uh, there is another thing. Some students complain we cannot pay attention. We have concentration issues and all that. If you imagine, you can easily concentrate. Whatever you read, if you imagine, the way you are reading a novel. So whatever you read in the novel, the characters are in front of your eyes, right? So if you do the same way with IELTS reading, you will never have concentration issue because you will be truly involved. One of my students, she achieved, I think, eight band in reading. So she said, you need to dive deeper into the passage. So when she said dive deeper, dive deeper means involve yourself into the passage that all the things are around you. Now, for example, we are going to read this passage about step wells. You might have seen in Lahore, uh, in, uh, near Lahore, we've got a place, Hiran Minar. And there they have a step well. One step, another step, another step, another step and steps are going down. So step well is actually a well like that. Well already you know it's water body, okay? Now we understand step wells. Uh, this is the title of the passage. What is the subtitle? Uh, a millennium ago step wells were fundamental to life in the driest parts of India, right? So it means they're going to talk about step wells in India. Then they say Richard Cox traveled to Northwest India to document these spectacular monuments from a bygone era. So the whole passage is about Indian step wells. All clear? Okay, now by the way, I'm doing it, I'm explaining it, it's taking more time, but when you're going to do it on your own, you should do it all in 30, 40 seconds. Now, what we're going to do next? We will try to read the first sentence of each paragraph and not even complete sentence. Even if the first four or five words give you some idea and you understand what the paragraph is going to be about, just leave that. And after that, you will scan all the paragraph. First sentence you will read and then the remaining, for example, first sentence you read and then your eyes will scan all the paragraph. I tell you how. Let's take a start with first paragraph. Please follow me on your handouts. During the 6th and 7th centuries, the inhabitants of the modern-day states of Gujarat and Rajasthan 
and all that. So 6th, 7th century, if anything related to that comes, you will come over there. And in this paragraph, you can see drinking, bathing, water animals, irrigation. So these type of words you can underline through scanning. Please use your pencils and try to underline. That's important. Clear? Okay, now second paragraph. Unique to this region. What are they talking about? Step wells. And then they say step wells are unique to this region. When something is unique to some region, it means it is not found elsewhere. Right? It is only found in that very area. So unique to this uh, region, step wells are often architecturally complex and varied. So they are going to talk about architectural design of step wells. And then you can underline the words like gathering, worship, relaxation. If you come down, you can see some words in italic. They have written Gujarat is starting with capital letter. Any word that is starting with capital letter is important. We've got Gujarat, Rajasthan, and then they mentioned the word uh, here, Bar uh, Bauri, okay, Delhi is mentioned, and all that. Clear? So you'll do it very, very quickly. Your eyes will move around and you will under, and don't underline everything. Okay, then you will be in trouble. Yeah, if you underline everything, then that means everything is important. You will not be able to find that. Third paragraph, as their name suggests, Step wells comprise a series of stone steps. It means they are going to define further about the architecture of step wells in this paragraph. Okay, and uh, they have mentioned the word rains and all that stuff. There are some levels, several levels and all that. Now we come to next paragraph, please. Some wells are vast open craters with hundreds of steps paving each sloping. Right, and uh, they are again mentioning about that. Others are more elaborate with long. So this is all about the size and how these step wells are. And then uh, there isn't anything which we can underline. Yes, they mentioned only this uh, visitors and there isn't any number and all that. Now, please come to next paragraph. Down the centuries, thousands of wells were constructed throughout Northwest India. Now they are talking about construction of wells. So any question that is related to the construction, you will come over here. Uh, okay, now please come to page number 18, next, book, next page. Uh, however, some important sites in Gujarat, and then they mention about Gujarat. Next paragraph, in Patan, any question about Patan? And then you can see they have written in italic, Rani ki vav, underline that. Rani ki vav means queen's step well. Then please underline queen uh, Udiyamati. Queen Udiyamati is mentioned here. 11th century is mentioned here. 13th century is mentioned. 1960s is mentioned. 20 meters, 27 meters. Then Rani ki vav features 500 sculptures. 2001 is mentioned. S measured 7.6. Earthquake is mentioned here. So these things you will underline very quickly and please do not underline every line. Just, I mean, you can either underline or you can encircle. You can decide if there is any number, I will encircle the number. Because if there is a question related to a number, you can look for circles, right? Otherwise, any capital letter, any word that is a proper noun like New Delhi, Patan, so you can underline those words. So you can use two, three things you can use. Uh, one is encircling. Second is underlining and third you can use brackets even. Okay, so that I mean for example if you know that my method is this that I underline all the words that start with capital letters proper nouns. I encircle the dates and numbers, right? So this is how you can easily find them. Okay, let's move on please. Uh, after this we've got another example in the Surya Khand. Now please underline Surya Khand and then King Bhima. North Gujarat, 1026, and then 108 small something, and all that. Clear? Next, Rajasthan also has a wealth of wells, the ancient city of Bondi, 200 kilometers south of Jaipur. So you can underline these things. And in the next, I mean, when this paragraph continues, we've got uh, Ranjiv Ki Bauri. 1699, 46 meters, and all that stuff. Uh, third last paragraph. 
in the old Ron town of uh, Abhanri, about 95 kilometers east of Jaipur. So, just you can underline this Abhanri, and then they mention 850 AD is mentioned here. Uh, then they mention Bowery, 11 stories are mentioned, right? And then they say uh, on the fourth side and all that stuff. Uh, second last paragraph. Still in public use is Nimrana ki Bowery. These words are Hindi words, okay? Uh, located just off Jaipur, 1700 is mentioned, 86 uh, uh, colonnaded, right? And all that. Last paragraph today. Now listen. Whenever there is a paragraph that starts with today, if there is any question about now, at present, you will straight away come to that paragraph. Today means they will tell you the present situation or the present location. Just underline today and that's it. I mean, any question about it and you will come to this paragraph. Now, you will do this commando operation in one minute or less than a minute, very quickly and all that. And for this, you can use your little skimming and more scanning. Why little skimming? Because only the first line you have to skim. Why more scanning? Because you have to scan all the paragraph. We are done with this. Now we go and see what are the enemies. Enemies are the questions, okay? First, we have true, false not given. Then we have short answer question and then we have table completion. So the good news is in true, false, not given questions and answers, they are in the same order. Number one. Number two, for answer the questions or the short answer question, again, questions and answers, they are in the same order. Now, let's do this together. Question number one. Uh, we are just reading the question now. Examples of ancient wells can be found all over the world. Now listen, whenever there is section 1, question number 1, you will go to first or second paragraph to find the answer because section 1 is for band score 2, 3, 4. So that's why they keep it simple, right? It's not going to be complicated. Now you're going to see, listen here, what you're going to see. Examples of, and now it's true, false, not given. So what you need to do, you need to divide the sentence into three parts. What is the first one? Examples of ancient wells can be found all over the world. Now look here. If the examples of ancient step wells are found all over the world, means in every country they have step wells, then it is true. If the examples of ancient step wells are only found in Asia or in India only, then it will be false. And if they don't tell us whether step wells are found in India and outside India also, then the answer is not, not given. So you should decide this. Now you go back and you will find examples are given. So please come to second paragraph, first line, and when I ask you, then tell me the answer. See this word, unique to this region. This region means India. And unique to this region, I told you, when something is unique to some region, it is not found elsewhere. So what is the question? Examples of ancient elf, uh, step wells can be found all over the world? No. They say unique to this region. So that is why the statement contradicts the information and the answer is false. false. Okay, that's a nice start. Now, you found one answer, you've got to go on and you will find other answers and we will do it together. Okay, don't do it alone. Question number two, step wells had a range of functions. Now, look here, whenever they use the word range of functions, variety of purposes and all that, in the question, they use the word range of functions. In the passage, they, they provide those functions like function number one, then two, then three, and four. So, the question is, step wells had a range of function in addition to those related to water collection. Now, one thing is, step wells were used for water collection. If they had any other purpose, like people used to come there for sitting, relaxing, people used to come for any other purpose. So, I mean, they say range of functions. If there are range of functions, answer is true. If it had only one function and that was related to water, then the answer is false. And if they don't tell us whether it had 
range of functions or not, then it is not given. Same paragraph. Read ahead and don't yell your answer in the class, okay, unless I ask you. Focus second sentence, during their heyday, they were, what do they mean by they? Step wells, you must understand this thing, okay, otherwise you will read they were, they means what, I don't know. So you need to just see where does the pronoun go. So they were places of gathering, number one, of leisure and relaxation, number two, and of worship, number three. So what is that? Range of functions. I told you whenever they use the word range of functions, look for those functions, right? So apart from water gathering, they had range of functions. What will be the answer? True. And you should realize, yes, I know the answer is true. I'm sure about it, okay? All right. Now, question number three. The few existing step wells in Delhi. Now look at me. We read Delhi somewhere. See that? So if you encircle the words that are start or that or if you encircle all the proper nouns, now you will look for circles. So you can easily find that, right? Now let's read the question and it's very important. It's not that you see Delhi is written, now I go back and read. Why? First you read the question, understand the question. Okay, what's the question? A few and it's not, it's really silly that you say Delhi is written here, Delhi is written in the passage, answer is true. I mean, sometimes you, you do silly things like that also. You need to make sure. Uh, I just give you a simple example. Islamabad is the capital of Pakistan. True, false, or not given. For example, if in the passage they don't mention about the capital of Pakistan and you say, I know Islamabad is the capital of Pakistan, it's true. If it is not given in the passage, the answer will be not given. So never use your general knowledge or common sense unless the time is running out and only five minutes left and you are doing the tukka stuff and then you can use that, okay? So anyways, few existing step wheels in Delhi are more attractive. Now listen, in true, false, not given, they always give you a comparative statement. And sometimes that comparative statement is true, they give the comparison. If comparison is uh, given in the opposite way, for that they use active voice and passive voice. If they say, for example, this is better than that, right? So they will, they will reverse it, use the passive voice, but still that is true. And if no comparison is given, then the answer will be, like for example, if you say I'm taller than you, but actually you are taller than me, right? So this is the, if there is comparison, then it can be either true or false. And if comparison is not given, then it is not given. Let's see now, what's the question? The few existing step wheels in Delhi are more attractive than those found elsewhere. Now, if they compare the step wells of Delhi with the step wells found elsewhere and those step wells in Delhi are more attractive, then it is true. If other step wells are more attractive than the step wells of Delhi, then false. And if this thing is not given, then it's not given. Same paragraph. Go ahead, please. Same paragraph, find the word Delhi and see if they are saying anything that they are more attractive, less attractive. Last line, while few also survive in Delhi, some were located in or near villages as public spaces for the community. Others were positioned beside roads and all that. Are they giving any comparison? No. So the answer is? And I tell you, you need to identify true, false, not given. Whenever there is a comparison, I know. I know what to see. This is a comparative statement, right? Let's go on, please. Next they say, question number four, it took workers many years to build the stone steps uh, characteristic of step wells. Now listen, uh, if it took workers many years and they mention several years or, and the number should be indefinite, 
because here they mentioned many years many years is indefinite number it's not definite like 500 years or 2000 years so it took workers many years to build the stone steps now stone step is going to be your clue word stone steps characteristics of step wells now listen if it took them several years and they mention then it is true if they say it took only a short time right then it is going to be false if they say it took only few years opposite of several is few then it is going to be false and if they don't tell anything whether it took uh, several years or few years then the answer will be not given a uh, very next paragraph they have used the word stone steps very next paragraph and just in two three lines see if workers took several years and all that yeah gesture this means true false not given <laughs> he's just saying that <laughs> means not given okay so what's the answer not given why not given because they only said step wells comprise a series of uh, stone steps descending blah 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 and all that the very fact that it took workers several years that is not mentioned so the answer is not given and you know you will complain after some time when we do reading with you we understand when we do alone we don't understand because you don't focus you don't i mean i show you the things you don't see it's just like we are sitting here right and i say look there is a sparrow which i don't want to see look there is a sparrow no so i mean i just show you look we've got this thing and when you start looking yourself then without me you will be doing ielts reading you will have your own youtube channel huh yeah <laughs> okay all right so question number 5 please the number of steps above the water level in a step well altered altered means changed during the course of a year number of steps above the water level like 10 steps above water level 5 steps number of steps above the water level in step well altered changed during the course of year so let's see go on very paragraph on page 17 right side column the first paragraph just focus for during the year they might use in winter in summer in rains in this in that and all that okay so if you just focus this thing as it recedes following the rains it means water recedes following the rains when the water level was high the user needed uh, only to descend a few steps right during the rains now that is during the year actually and the users needed only to descend a few steps to reach it when it was low several levels would have to be negotiated so what's the answer true because the question is number of steps above the water level in a step well altered during the course of a year and for course of a year they're saying during the rainy season they had to go down little few steps but otherwise they had to go down more okay so we are done with first five questions and for true false not given i just give you the summary read the question carefully find a clue word go to the passage scan for that clue word once you find one answer you will be more conf confident because you know now you got to read ahead and you will find the answers okay